this is Ken Griggs, and we're back in order to define how to find the characteristic equation of a matrix, and then to show that the characteristic equation of the, the electron-positron uh, um, matrix, graph matrix, is the same as the characteristic equation of the photonic, or the photon, matrix. And so what we're doing now is just finding that characteristic equation. So again, our definition, where we have the determinant of the, uh, of the matrix and the eigenvalue and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so our matrix is this. That's chi. And the determinant, the first thing we have to do is subtract from it uh, lambdas. So the matrix that we're subtracting, this thing right here, is in point of fact that right here. So that becomes okay. So that's what that becomes down here, okay? So now what we're going to do is take a determinant. Now again, if you don't know what taking a determinant means, you should go out and look it up because it, you know, it requires a, a some course a, a, a course in matrix mechanics. But it's not hard once you, you uh, know the trick. So the determinant is given by this right here. So this is our polynomial, or our monomial now. And now we're going to solve it for, well, we're not going to solve it. We're just going to write it out. But normally, in order to find the lambda values, the eigenvalues, we would solve it for 0. But we're just going to write it out. So we're going to multiply it out, and when we do, we find that we have negative 9 um, plus lambda squared. This is what we find becomes our characteristic equation. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same process to the photonic, uh, or the photon matrix, the state that looks like a photon. Okay. So we have as for the photon that its state is given by the 0, 3, 3, 0. Recall that, right? And we're going to subtract from it, given our definition of what the determinant is. We've got our state minus lambda uh, unit uh, matrix. So we're going to subtract from it lambda, 0, 0, lambda. My lambda are a little shoddy, so I apologize. We're going to subtract that from it. And we're going to get a matrix of minus lambda, 3, 3, minus lambda. Right there. See that down there? Right there. And now we're going to find its determinant. And the determinant is equal to, in this case, lambda squared minus 9. All right. Now recall. So that's exactly what we got from before. I've just literally uh, put a box around the results. So we see that they both share, these two matrices, in fact, do share the same characteristic equation, which, from the rules of matrix algebra, means that they can be transformed into each other. In other words, our similarity equation that we were demonstrating before, that the T 1, 2, chi, 1, t, or sorry, t, 1, 1, 2 equals chi, 2. That similarity equation can, in fact, be satisfied with these two, um, with these two uh, uh, matrices, with this initial state of uh, an electron and a positron and the final state of a photon. Now, I want to very quickly work, out, work that out to show you that, yes, this really does work. Now, our transformation equation, our T equation, in this case is a 2 by 2, or T equation, our T matrix, excuse me. In this case is a 2 by 2 matrix. Now, the most general form of a real orthogonal, basically that's what it means to be real as well, but an orthogonal 2 by 2 transformation is, or looks like this. It's the cosine of theta 
sine theta minus the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. This is one, uh, one version of an orthogonal transformation matrix in a single variable theta. Now again, uh, it, it would be um, uh, a good practice to go, if you're not familiar with this or if you uh, haven't seen it in a while, just to go back and look up orthogonal matrices. Uh, Wikipedia is great. Um, or your matrix algebra book. And just remind yourself what it is. Now, I want to demonstrate that um, this, this meaning of orthogonality is that the transpose is in fact equal to the inverse of the matrix. That's our definition down here of orthogonality. So if we transpose this matrix, it should in point of fact be the inverse of that matrix. So let's just do that and let's test it out just to make sure that this crap actually works. So the transpose, I'm going to rewrite the matrix here. Now I'm going to use my own uh, um, um, shorthand way of doing the cosine of, of theta. I'm going to call that theta sub c is the cosine of theta. I'm going to say that the sine of theta is theta sub s, and the minus sine of theta is minus theta sub s, and the cosine of theta again is theta c. So I just want to, to show you this because it, um, it'll make your life easier in the future when you're dealing with sines and cosines and all of that stuff to possibly just use this little shorthand trick so that you don't have to be befuddled of writing sines and cosines all over the place. So the theta sub c is in point of fact the cosine of theta. The theta sub s is in point of fact the sine of theta. Okay, And then the negative here, right? negative sine theta, is just you put a negative right over here. Same thing. So it's inverse t uh, or its transpose basically means that you literally rotate the matrix across the diagonal. So if you're looking at entry 1, 2, it now becomes entry 2, 1. So again, look it up very quickly on Wikipedia, and you'll see very easily how to do that. So for us, I'm just going to write it out. It's theta c minus theta s theta s, theta c. That would be the transpose here. So we've constructed the transpose just by taking the theta s and moving it across the diagonal up here. Right? That's what it is here. So this matrix, and doing the same but opposite down here, moving that down here, and that's what we've done here. So according to this orthogonality aspect of, of these transformation matrices, t should be this transpose t should, in point of fact, be the inverse of t. Now, just to recall, the inverse of t times t equals 1. That's what inverse means, right? That's the equation, that the inverse of t times t is 1. And it's also, you can do it in the opposite direction. You can say t times its inverse is 1, OK? So let's just demonstrate that that's actually what's happening. So I'm going to take the matrix, my t transpose, and I'm going to multiply it by t. So I've got my theta c minus theta s, theta s, and theta c, multiplied by my theta c, theta s, minus theta s, theta c. Okay. See that? So there's my transpose of this. They're multiplying, we're multiplying them by each other. So that equals theta c squared plus theta s squared, and then theta c theta s minus theta s theta c, and then theta c theta s minus theta c theta s, and then uh, theta s squared plus theta c squared. Okay, so we have that is the result uh, down here. Now, if you don't know how to multiply matrices, again, Wikipedia, it's really easy, but you know, you'll have to practice it to, to be able to just whip it out, uh, as I've done here. But um, what we find right here is theta c squared plus theta s squared, and we also find down here theta s squared plus theta c squared. 
that's a basic trigonometric thing. It's basically saying that sine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta. So our identity from trigonometry is that that's always 1. right? Remember that from trigonometry? So the result of those two entries is just 1. Okay. So I'm writing it over here. Now when we go to this side, we see theta c, theta s, minus theta s, theta c. Well, that's just 0. And the same thing down here, theta c, theta s, minus theta s, theta c, that's 0. So in our entry, we get 0 on both of those off-diagonal entries. Okay? This is the unit matrix. This is what we're saying when we say that these two things, t times t transpose, equals 1. And that's the same thing as saying that t transpose is, in point of fact, the inverse. So we've just demonstrated for the 2 by 2 case that this actually is the case. It works. Now what we want to demonstrate is that we can find the actual transformation matrix that transforms our state 1, which is an electron and a positron, into our state 2, which is a photon. So we, we, again, we know that those two states can be transformed into each other. The question becomes, what transforms them? Okay, And so what we find out uh, is, and I'm going to try to do this as simply as possible, is that if we use that theta is equal to 45 degrees, right? so theta equals 45 degrees, then we find that our transformation matrix becomes um, 1 over the square root of 2 times 1, 1, minus 1, 1. Okay? So when you stick 45 degrees into uh, what t was originally, which is this theta c, theta s, minus theta s, theta c, then this is what you get as a result for putting 45 degrees in there. Now we're going to find its inverse or its, uh, its, its um, transpose, and then we're going to do all the multiplication together to show you that you get a photon out of it. Okay, so our transpose is 1 over the square root of 2 times 1 minus 1, 1, 1, right? That's what you get there as a transpose. It's just, you know, flipping it across the diagonal here. And now we're going to do our multiplication. Our multiplication is that t transpose times chi 1 t. That's what we're trying to do. And our chi 1 was the electron and the positron. And the electron and the positron, as you recall, um, that matrix looks like this. Remember that? That's the matrix we're going to be multiplying on this side by t transpose and on this side by t. So let's just write that all out and do it. Now, I'm really, I'm working through this primarily to just demonstrate that it does work. Now, later on, you can work through it on your own. I'll just present for you what the results are. Um, so we've got 1 over the square root of 2, and this is our t transpose, of 1 minus 1, 1, 1, multiplied by our chi 1 matrix, which is the electron and the positron, and that's 3, 0, 0, minus 3, multiplied by 1 over the square root of 2 times the, trans, uh, times the transformation, uh, or the t matrix of 1, 1, minus 1, 1. Okay, so this is what we're multiplying. Now we can take this 1 over the square root of 2, since it's a scalar, and move it all the way through to this and multiply it by this, we'll, we'll get 1 half. Okay, so the 1 half comes out. We're going to multiply these first two right here together first, and that gives us 3, 3, 3, and minus 3, and we're going to multiply it again by 1, 1, 1 minus 1, 1, rather. So we've multiplied these two together to give us this, and now we're multiplying it by this, which is that matrix right up here. So we'll do that multiplication, and that gives us 0, 6, 
six, zero. Okay? So that's what that gives us down below. Now we can easily multiply this one half in here and we get our result of zero, three, three, zero, which, as we talked about before, translates into the graph of the photon. So we've demonstrated how to use this evolution equation. We've demonstrated that, you know, we already knew that this is what would happen if you start with uh, a positron and an electron, or an electron and a positron, and you transform it. Uh, we knew that it could be transformed into a photon, but we wanted to show you how to do it. Now, certainly one could ask the question, well, how do you know what the theta is, and blah, 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 blah. Well, there are routines. You can easily deduce what theta is if you know what you're starting with and what you're ending with. That's not a problem. But I did want to show you that the mathematics actually does work out, that that one matrix will be transformed into this new matrix. These two particles can become a photon. And vice versa. If we literally swap the beginning and the end, that is the photon for the electron-positron, we can transform the photon into an electron and a positron. So I did want to, to work through that to show you that, yes, given our similarity equation that defines how states evolve in time through an orthogonal transformation, that we can, in point of fact, evolve uh, a graph of a positron and, a uh, and, a, and an electron, a particle and an antiparticle, into a photon, pure and simple. So I hope you enjoyed that one.